What's up everybody, it's Taylor Soper from GeekWire here with my colleagues Kurt Schlosser and Nat Levy. We are here back in Seattle as you can see by the Pearl Jam posters. Back from a four and a half day extravaganza in Las Vegas, we were at the Consumer Electronics Show. It's the biggest tech show in the world. For me, it was my sixth time, so a lot of the same stuff, a lot of the different stuff, but for you guys, it was your first time there, so I'm really interested to hear, now that you're back for an hour or so, like what the experience was like, and uh, yeah, Kurt, I mean, was it what you expected? Was it different? Would you go back? <laughs> uh, I don't know if on, on landing I'm ready to say I'll go back, um, but I, you know, it was it was definitely educational. It was it was uh, everything I expected it to be, and then uh, a lot more as far as the number of people, the ability to move around um, was really surprising to me. The inability to move around, I should say, uh, just just a crush of humanity, and then just so much stuff to uh, to try and take in and understand and and piece together into, into interesting stories and find find ways that it all connected. Um, so yeah, I, I'm a little sleepy and, uh, but also, you know, kind of energized by, by the fact that it's behind us. Yeah. And Nat, you, you, you love Las Vegas, but you hadn't ever been to CES and it was a different experience for you this time, being there when the, the world's biggest tech show was also going on. Yeah, it changes the city a lot. Um, it, it, it typically you you see a lot of late night traffic, a lot of action in the evenings, and you can't go anywhere at that point. But today, it, this week, it was kind of real busy during the day, quiet down at night. It kind of looked like a little more of a traditional city at that point. Right. But you know, I I didn't know what to expect, and I don't know if my expectations were met or if they were not. Um, <laughs> and I feel like I need like you know solid eight months to uh, reflect on it before I can give a final judgment. Well, let's talk about what you guys saw there and what we saw. You know, some of the big themes were Amazon versus Google in the voice assistant world. We saw a bunch of advertisements for Hey Google, which is Google's assistant. I mean, Kurt, what were some of the cool things that you saw? This is a gadget type of conference, but there's also all kinds of different technologies there from AI to self-driving cars. Like, what, was, what were the coolest things that you saw? I think uh, a couple things. You know, number one, I was surprised by, by the robotics, the, the like humanoid robots, you know, we'll do a story every couple of months uh, with like the Google robot that does a backflip or whatever, and it, it seems like some far off thing that nobody's really working on except a few little niche uh, thing. And then you come to a conference like this, and they're everywhere. They're rolling all over the place. Some of them look like garbage cans. Some of them look like R two D two, and some of them look, look like people. And they have legs and they walk and. It, so that was kind of cool, and I also am, am really into uh, the transportation and mobility aspect of what people are pitching, not just for like connectivity in your car, but you know, electric vehicles, concept vehicles, concept helicopters, skateboards, bikes, you name it. Um, to me, that, that stuff's more interesting than just another you know, new headphone or something. Speaking of robots, you had one of the coolest experience of, uh, experiences of all of us at CES, which was just a few hours ago, you played ping pong against not a human, but a, a machine, basically. I played uh, this company called Omron. It's a Japanese robotics company uh, with offices in Chicago. They brought Forpheus uh, to CES, and this thing was like a praying mantis size, like 12 feet high, looming over the ping pong table at the other end. And uh, I was in this, this court, uh, being filmed by about 300 uh, CES attendees on their cell phones while I played against this robot. And did you win? I think I did win. Uh, you know, the thing, it's not, it's not supposed to be competitive. It's supposed to teach you just sort of, well, they use it as a teaching tool for their workers um, and a gimmick to get people to come to their booth. But it definitely, I could feel it reacting if I hit a better shot. It, it, it kind of learned from that. It's got three eyes, it's watching you and the ball with this center arm thing that swings. It was fun. I was, I was hot, thirsty, the robot obviously was not. It had been playing all week, so good. that was a good way to end the, end the week. And that, you had the biggest story of the week and it had nothing to do with gadgets, a lot to do with darkness. That's right. Um, it kind of seemed like everywhere I went, something bad happened. Like <laughs> not I, necessarily bad, but just weird. Weird. I had all the I had all these things lined up, and every time I went somewhere, it got derailed. First, Google gets their giant booth rained out. Then the next day, I come in for a panel, and all of a sudden, I'm just walking around, and lights go out. And this is in the Las Vegas. Right convention in the center. Convention center. Which is this massive hall where all the yeah. companies have their booths. We're right in the center hall area, which is home to like LG's big thing. They have 
giant TVs. They have all these kitchen things. They've got like just a massive area, but it's all enclosed. So you go in and the lights just went out completely. It's total darkness. And everyone whips out their phone and turns on like the little flashlight <laughs> and just starts kind of like wandering around. And for a minute, I was like, is this some wacky surprise announcement oh, yeah, that they're throwing know. on everyone? But then after like 30 seconds, I was like, nope. And then turn around and just the reporter brain went to work. And the cause of this was the rainfall, at least that's what CTA, which runs CES, said. And I think it was the first time it had rained in 110 days in Vegas. So I guess we brought some of the rain to Seattle. I've used that joke like 50 times this week. <laughs> um, but, icebreaker. Yeah. So that was odd, you know, but, you know, they got the power back on and the show went on. Yeah, I wonder what what the uh, the exhibitors thought about it. Like the Samsungs and LGs. Like, what did they lose in that two hours? Right, did their big magical deal that was just walking in the door waiting for them evaporate with with the uh, power outage? Who knows? And you know, for me, I think one of the cooler experiences I had was going to the Wynn Hotel in a two thousand dollar night suite to check out how the Amazon Echo works and some of these hotel rooms at the Wynn. It was just kind of cool to see the Echo outside of a home or an office to see, you know, there's applications for this technology outside of what we're maybe used to. So Amazon Echo and Alexa was a huge theme to this conference, I think. We heard about them every day, every hour, it seemed like. Um, but kind of just to wrap up our experience, you know, we'll have a lot more coverage on GeekWire in the coming days from CES, but does this, do you, does the CES make you guys more confident in the future, scared? I mean, that robot sounds really cool, but also very, you know, it's kind of scary and freaky. <laughs> you know, seeing all the stuff you guys did, learning from all these companies, what they're doing, are you excited, more excited to cover tech? Are you having more concerns about it? What, what are you feeling? I mean, it's, it's definitely uh, cool and helpful to get outside of the Seattle bubble. Uh, you know, we, we, everybody knows what we cover sort of religiously, and we, you know, we try to see stuff that's coming across the, the web, but we don't travel that much. So when you get down and you mix it up with a bunch of people from Silicon Valley or Austin or the East Coast or Asia, I mean, Asia was very well represented, obviously, uh, and all those products and all that stuff, and so much of it will never see the light of day. Um, but I don't know if it gives you hope. Maybe a little bit of worry for future landfills, but um, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, there are definitely smart people making cool stuff. I just think it could be like condensed. I want to. I want to be on the panel that lets people in, and be like, "No, you're okay." Nah. <laughs> and now, how about you? Are you uh, scared of the future now after CES? More excited? I know you had some wacky experiences. Yeah, I don't know. That's a great question. I don't really know how to answer it. Um, I mean, if like the robot uprising happens, I guess we just need to cut the power. And then everything will be fine. Or yeah. just go somewhere where it's kind of wet every couple of months. I did and see then it. we'll be good. I saw a tweet about that when the power did go out. And it was yep. like, this is how you would turn off all these robots. You just hit, pull the yeah. switch. Yeah. I mean, it's the consumer electronics show. And electricity <laughs> was the thing that kind of felled them for a whole day. So and there's some good irony in there. Yeah. Yep. Well, guys, I had fun, especially because it was your guys' first time there and kind of seeing it through your eyes. And hopefully we can do this again. And... Big shout out to Kevin Lasota who was on the trip as well with us and did all the video and did all some cool work. Um, I would say see you next time, but that's not for a year. But see you next <laughs> year at CES for Kurt and I'm Matt. I'm sure you'll be there. <laughs> I'm Taylor. Uh, stay tuned for all, the, all, all of our follow-up coverage from CES. Check out geekwire.com. And uh, thanks for hanging out in Vegas with us.